we ask members of the First Presidency to please arise. It is proposed that the First Presidency sustain Russell Marion Nelson as prophet, seer, and revelator, and president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Any opposed may so manifest it. Yeah, this one gets on. Uh, back when I was uh, in high school, I remember the news talking about uh, allowing equality uh, in the workplace. And this was when the first instances of women playing men's sports and men playing women's sports got kicked off is because there were high schools that did not have a particular sport for the other sex who wanted to play that sport and so the california rules came down to say that if there is no equivalent sex sport then the particular sex can try out for the other sexes teams and I it didn't really get going it fizzled out and died because it was clear that men and women are different and require the different sporting groups but it carried also into the business sector into the economy in which uh, particularly those who were hispanic were uh, unable to acquire uh, jobs that allowed them uh, a living. They had to settle for menial, uh, part-time labor, working at Burger King, cleaning jobs and such. And so again, California forced businesses to uh, have a quota of discriminatory categories, whether it's blacks, Hispanic, I, I think even disabled got started back then too. It may not have, that may have been a later development after that miserable failure, because what it did was force people who are unqualified to work at a job to work at a job simply because they had a title of a discriminatory category. They did not have any accomplishments to put on a resume to qualify for a job, allowing the companies to choose the best qualified persons to work for their company and thus produce financial results and uh, also there was a backlash of women as I, I think it was in the 80s can't remember it could be the 90s but I it was Carl's jr 
when they were doing their, if it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't belong on your face, using women as the commercial uh, persons. And women were outraged. How dare you employ women in your commercials? Which didn't make any sense other than these people were trying to destroy Carl's Jr. Keep them from successfully making money. And they were calling it prostitution. <laughs> Anything and everything they could throw out that might stick. And thus Carl's Jr. was forced to terminate the employment of women in the workplace. Yeah, there were bikini-clad popular models. That's what they were complaining about. Because if you got an obese woman eating a Carl's Jr. burger, <laughs> that might not be productive for Carl's Jr. Similar to uh, when uh, Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue was forced to have obese women modeling swimsuits. It sort of tanked Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated is about fit, healthy women, not a promotion for obesity. Dear God. But you get people who just want to take away agency of others. This is really the push behind it. People who want to destroy others for making money, and so they create a problem that takes away agency. But that's not the video topic for this. It's about titles and entitlement versus accomplishments. And so, as I'm the one who deciphered Paleo-Hebrew without a PhD and a title, um, as also working at a prestigious university, I'm well aware of the difference between those who have titles and those who accomplish. <coughs> Any of the PhDs in the field who are working at a university only have the titles. They do not have anything of significant value for an accomplishment. But me, yeah, accomplished. Deciphering Paleo-Hebrew. This is huge. And as you can see, I'm only known about, but not acknowledged. <clears throat> because that is my number one uh, attention grabber throughout the world is Paleo-Hebrew decipherment. Whether YouTube cares or not. And they don't. Mormons don't care. Even though it shows Joseph Smith is a translator. And Mormons don't care because I'm not the title of president of the church. Prophet, seer, revelator, translator. When was the last time you heard the prophets, seers, and revelators say they also have translator gifts? We just had conference. Did you not pay attention? Did you go on vacation and purposely miss it? Were you out getting snacks for the conference so that you missed it? Yeah, they don't talk about translator. But yet, we've had Nelson get up and botch translation miserably. Horrifically. Any expert in the field will tell you your living prophet of Jesus is a fraud. He not only botched the translation, but he's causing damage with his botched translation. 
This is the difference between people who only have titles versus people who are accomplished. And so this should scare Mormons. As you continue to stay in the church and not recognize the fraud and leave. <laughs> Dear God. And so, yes, Rome, uh, section 107, verse 91 and 92. President of the church is supposed to have the gifts. And you know somebody has the gifts because it's physical, tangible consequences and results, uh, accomplishments. It is not a title. You are not gifted with a title of prophet because somebody laid their hands on you. And so, in uh, 4th Nephi, chapter 1, verse 3, uh, the people are said to have all things in common among them. Therefore, they were not rich and poor, bond and free. They were all made free. They all had agency. Despite Oaks in conference saying we have to sacrifice freedoms in order to get along in society, <laughs> wear your underwear, the sign of your bondage, and partakers of the heavenly gift. Everybody has free access to inspiration and to produce the results of that inspiration to produce the, res the consequences. <clears throat> you have accomplished something. And people can see that accomplishment. Nobody's validating feelings in any of this. This is the 1990s when psychologists swarmed into the school systems and told the teachers in the schools that kids are stressed taking tests. And so we have to make it participation. You came to school, good for you, here's your diploma. You've got the title. Absolutely no accomplishments, just a title of graduation. And then they go off into schools and demand that the school, the colleges and the universities do the same thing. And so now nobody is accomplished. Everybody has a title. And then they take that title and demand that the business world accept them for their title as they tank the businesses. See what's being done here? Same thing that was done to California to destroy the economy. to hurt businesses so that everything gets destroyed. Psychologists are evil. When are people going to figure this out? Dear God. I mean, in Utah, people are still in denial that the cause is psychology. Hildebrandt's now in prison. Oh no, new parole board may let him out soon. But the, the whole asylum got shut down here in Utah now? Are you not catching on to the patterns? This is because our society is not teaching scientific process. Logical Socratic methodology for the development of theories to have the theories tested for three confirmations to establish facts. That's how I deciphered Paleo-Hebrew. I had to go to Canada to get educated on that process because the United States wouldn't teach me. We have the science fairs in high school, but it's insufficient. We are not taught in the classrooms. And so you get the kids who run the tests on which battery operates my cassette player the longest so I can listen to my music. <laughs> and so, 
yeah, nobody's actually inventing and creating. Everybody's just copying and repeating and minimalism. And so, when I worked for Beehive Clothing, I, way back when, in the day, uh, God, I've told the story before. I ex expected Mormons to, you know, having produced the results of the premise or the precepts of the Book of Mormon. That Mormons are listening to the Spirit, they're producing the results, they're accomplished. Nope. Because of the bondage of the church, this carries down to those in positions of authority and trust in the church, whether it be the religious leaders or the, the church's businesses. And and so it's the Noah, King Noah syndrome, that the abuse and corruption at the top trickles down, not the money, for Reagan economics. And, and so it was very frustrating to work for businesses, particularly the church, because that's what it was at the beginning, in which I expected them to have all of these advanced technologies and, and systems that were effective in prospering the church. And so it was a big shock to me when I, I saw the, the bondage of the supervisors and the managers and the, the directors of the various facilities that uh, we're not interested in the workers using inspiration to improve the workplace. Those in positions of title were running things and they were not accomplished. <coughs> and so I get transferred into beehive clothing I, by the way, warned them not to do the crane-operated storage systems for the pick line. They did it anyway, and they lost one million dollars that first year <laughs> because of the ineffective pick line. And the company, when they were said, told about this, you know, we lost a million dollars the first year. Well, your people are incompetent. They just need time to figure it out. Oh my god. <laughs> you had these little kids who came in and were observing the process. And they, with their title, <laughs> told the church exactly what needed to be done to fix things. And they lost a million dollars. So, anyway, <clears throat> going over to Beehive Clothing, we had a crew of seven. We would take the boxes that came from the sewing floor and put them on pallets, and then when the pallets were full, we'd then take the pallets and put them onto the storage shelving. And then the pick line for Beehive Clothing, uh, when they would call back saying we're out of this product, we would then take product from the storage racks to the pick line and unload it. <coughs> and so our crew of seven worked 40 hour week, week weekdays. Or, weeks, eight hours a day, five days a week, and then we had to work on Saturdays to get caught up on the overflow 
so that we could be more ready for Monday's workload from the sewing floor. And this was a perpetual problem. The sewing floor was producing a product that seven people were unable to handle. <coughs> and forced us to have to work overtime. And thus, working overtime requires the church to spend more money because overtime hours are more and, and so on and so forth. And, and so I, I saw the patterns of how things were being run and developed uh, how to improve the system. But I was told there were numerous people who've come before me who tried to fix it and this current one that the form or the current employee had created is the best that could be come up that they could come up with. And so it took him and this the manager to leave. <laughs> and the new manager said, yeah, sure, go ahead and do it. And so we set it all up. And uh, the accomplishments, the results, the consequences of my system required only two people, four hours, and we were done. And the pick line never called back anymore because we were able to always keep the pick line full. Two people, four hours. And the church was so impressed because they were searching for revelation, pondering and praying for an answer to their prayers that they could transfer Beehive uh, Warehouse to the distribution center warehouse on 17th and 19th where I was transferred from. And they didn't bother to tell us that that's what they were doing. Entitled people tend to keep secrets. <clears throat> and, and so, yeah, what I had accomplished panicked the employees. You're working for the church. You're not gonna get laid off or fired. <laughs> but that's what they were afraid of. And so I noticed that after I had done this, before it reached, the results reached the corporate board, that the employees were purposely going slower and less effective to purposely destroy uh, the new system so that they can maintain their job. They did not understand <laughs> they had job security working for the church. <sighs> but nonetheless, the, when the church found out of how productive it was, they went, oh, great. And the transfers were made. People were transferred over to the distribution center <clears throat> and everything was fine. <laughs> but yeah, and uh, they even found that because of the new system, it even worked so that only one person was required because the pick line was also transferred over to the distribution center. And so as a result, you didn't need the two people the one to supply the pick line and put everything into storage and the other to take stuff from the, the, uh, the railing uh, from the sewing floor to the pellets that were redesigned. So yeah, it was real simple. I just cut out the middleman process that was slowing things down because the uh, the uh, boxes were, were put on pallets around the, the railing and then 
those were then taken to the floor pallets, and then the floor pallets were taken to the... And so I just removed the railing pallets, and they went straight to the uh, line pallets that were uh, all labeled for the different kinds of garments that they were. And, yeah, you remove a process, and thus you cut out the extended time that was slowing things down. And so, yeah, it's frustrating when uh, I recognize that the church was not being run as efficiently and effectively as it could have been. I see how the scriptures are. I read the Book of Mormon. I know how to do things. I know how to run the church, especially after 2008. I learned how to design and build Zion. I've got it all up in my brain. I put it out on paper. I know what needs to be done. I know how to build it, and I know how effective it will be. The governing structure, yeah, I know how to run America properly. It's pissing me off lately that everybody's purposely doing things to destroy America, not wanting to have everybody prosper in America. And so it's very frustrating when I have this knowledge, and I've demonstrated previous accomplishments, but nobody wants to... Uh, use me as an advisor because of my accomplishments, because I don't have the titles. And so, yes, even the economy, the Book of Mormon, how can you have an economy where there's nobody in bondage <laughs> and poor? Every system, my mom told me that. You know, I'm complaining about Reagan economics. And she's saying, this is the best economy that we can come up with. No, it isn't. <laughs> and so, yeah, even the Book of Mormon, uh, going into further detail, uh, after defining priestcraft and saying that's an abomination, and yet we have 119, huh? But he goes on to say that a, an economy that utilizes a monetary system is doomed to fail. And so yes, over the course of history, we have seen that. When you have a monetary system of economy, yeah, you're going to have people who are put into slavery because it's profitable for the title people. And so, yeah, yesterday I uh, watched season four of uh, Jack Ryan from Amazon. And not only did I catch on to the Mormon references, <laughs> hilarious, another show where the Mormon is the bad guy. <laughs> and it was even... I'm just going, is somebody working for Amazon aware of what I'm talking about in my videos? <laughs> because the Mormon, who's the villain of the story, used his LDS edition of the Bible to encode communication with a, a uh, was he a government leader? Or a CIA person? Whoever the other corresponding villain was. So that he too had to have the LDS edition of the Bible and uh, be able to decode the communications so that they can coordinate their chemical attack on America, shipping it 
throughout the world to come to America through the Mexican border. And <clears throat> and uh, I'm just going, oh, wow, that is awesome. Because <laughs> that's exactly what's being done to America right now that I've been trying to tell you. Screaming, sending all sorts of tips and and warnings to our federal government. Hey, hello, the church is doing this to America to destroy it, to overthrow it. You know, right here, this is their plot. This is their playbook on how to destroy America. And this was the death threat, remember? I'm accomplished. Listen to me. Nobody will, because I don't have the title. And so, yes, Arizona just got busted yesterday after I went to bed. <laughs> the Mormon priesthood and Arizona government got busted with the leaked plot to overthrow women's rights. Their whole abortion plan to sabotage it for women got leaked. Not just the Mormon who bribed uh, Carrie Lake, is that her name? To step down. <laughs> and then she had recorded the conversation and said, you step down or I leak it. <laughs> and she leaked it. And he stepped down. <laughs> and then the Mormons retaliated with this abortion thing. But the abortion thing seems to be a part of why they didn't want Carrie Lake to run for office. They wanted their particular candidate who would be a supporter of the abortion ban. But yeah, this is run by the church. Even though it's Mormons who are doing the action, they, being Mormon, are ordered by the church. When the prophets get up and say abortion is a sin, and religious freedom to ban abortion, and women are not equal, and so we have prevented the amendment from going through for equal, the Equal Rights Amendment for Women. All these things over all these years, polygamy, women must be bound with their underwear in polygamous relationships to be sex trafficked. All of this is criminal. All of this designed to overthrow the First Amendment and the rest of the Constitution and thus destroy the government for the sole purpose of having their kingdom of Lucifer for the millennium. And Mormons don't care. They want criminal activity. Because again, the King Noah syndrome, the corruption and abuse at the top trickles down. And so the people at the bottom of the pyramid do not see it as criminal and abusive behavior. So I get all these comments from Mormons about abuse. Want me to go over the two that I got this morning? <sighs> hmm. So the Book of Mormon is in learning of the Jews. That's what all my videos focus on. That this church, by claiming to be Christian, are evil, morally evil, for replacing Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon in the learning of the Jews, turning them Christian. You can't do that. It's wrong. And Mormons refuse to listen because of the King Noah syndrome. And so we have Kim Olson on Jasmine Prepares for her Mormon Bishop Temple Covenant interview. fun with PNG's pictures. Just fun. I figured out further use of one of the programs I have. 
so that I'm able to do stuff that I've been wanting to do better. <laughs> but Kim, again, see, I can't have a relationship with women because none of them are smart. All of them, I have the King Noah syndrome. Church is corrupt, passes it on to Mormons. Their Danite ancestors pass the corruption on to their children, and their children, and their children, until the current day children. These Mormons who are rising up against our government are descendants of the Danites. Governor Cox, Chris Stewart, Senator Lee. Everybody knows about Lee, and yet... So yeah, all of the Arizona guys, they too. And nobody cares. Mormons believe they're entitled by being Mormon. When the accomplishments of the church are nil, and I get people who say, oh, we give charity, yeah, to Africa. How's Africa doing with all the charity the church has given to Africa? Yeah, they've pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps, haven't they? You gotta look at the consequences, not of the act, of the title. Just because it says it's a charity doesn't mean it is a charity. Just because it says it's a religion doesn't mean it is a religion. Don't look at the titles, look at the accomplishments. And so Kim says, cracks me up what people do for 15 minutes of fame. I think that was a longer video than 15 minutes. So sad. And I passed the buck on to Jasmine anyway. Jasmine's gone missing. I can only assume she's been murdered. That that's the only reason why she's not communicating with me any further. Very frustrating. You know, I can understand that, you know, accidents and surgeries and Mormons and such, but, you know, if I were an actual best friend or a family member, this would be unacceptable, Jasmine. I'm not happy. I miss you. And she it just, is she doing it to get this emotional response from me? What are you doing to me, Jasmine? I'm worried about you, and so I'm emotionally lashing out. When you name your church after Jesus, it must be the title. That's what Mormons have interpreted that Book of Mormon passage to be. And so then you get Nelson who comes up and abuses it to take advantage of Mormons who've misinterpreted it as meaning a title. Oh, we have the name. Jesus, it's right here in the middle of our name. Duh. <laughs> title means nothing. Accomplishments. You have to show Jesus. Well, he, he's God. None of the other Christian churches show their God. And, and by the way, Joseph Smith saw him. No, he didn't. Vision. Dream. <sighs> and so Alfred Brooke then says, yeah, the world is full of jerks like this. YouTube didn't flag it. YouTube also has been trying to get people to assassinate me. They're promoting ads of track down this person, know their location, get them, murder them. Because Trump is already in trouble for this. He gave the address of a judge and people went to harm the judge and his family. You can't do that. That is incitement to violence. Ordering a hit. 
And so this is exactly what YouTube is doing to me. YouTube is ordering people to come and murder me. And then they get mad when I send a, a complaint. How dare you? <laughs> and they trash other system processing for me. So yeah, I told you, the church will never leave me alone. They have to stop before I will stop. And they won't stop. Because they have to do what they're doing to maintain their title and appearance of authority. And Mormons are not understanding this. That because they have no accomplishments, there is no Jesus. They are not doing any good. They are committing crimes. And because of this, they are inciting you to commit crimes. The whole law of sacrifice. You must sacrifice your life. Not just your career and your economy and, and your honor and dignity but your very life so that the church is protected the kingdom is protected from what they're already protected in the first amendment from what from criminal prosecution and so thus the church got Mormons into all positions of government and business throughout this valley, throughout the state of Utah, to protect the church, to do the church's will on all people, when only 40% recognize as Mormon. 60% says no we want nothing to do with the church and so clearly the majority does not rule because it's been gerrymandered to defend the church and so we, we've seen this the church has been going around not just in the state of Utah but the rest of the nation and the world now to take away agency so that the church can reign supreme when everything crashes. So, that should be sufficiently long enough for me to bathe and shave. And <laughs> Titles, guys. By their titles you shall know them as false. And you don't, if you don't see it. You want somebody who's accomplished. And you're even told to look for somebody who's accomplished. Joseph Smith prophesied of it. And you're refusing to do it. You're sticking with a guy with a title. And somewhere I have Oaks explaining how he's able to fool Mormons and say whatever he wants because Mormons, because of his mantle, as he calls it, which is the title, <laughs> Mormons are so in awe with him for his title that they don't listen to him. And so thus he's able to say whatever he wants. And thus Mormons are indoctrinated through that process to be psychologically manipulated into doing what he wants them to do. And so, yeah, that they're pushing Oaks's thing. He's not the president of the church, but yet he came out talking about the underwear. And so then, the other day, I had gotten a hold of the church's announcement to all leaders throughout the church that the Temple Recommend interviews are now being altered to emphasize the underwear. There's now a push for the underwear. And the whole thing is false. 
the idol underwear is just an idol god, but it symbolizes, as he said, that you are not free. You are in bondage to the church <coughs> through the covenants, which are the covenants of bondage. No agency. And I shouldn't have to explain this to Mormons. Mormons shouldn't be getting upset with me because they should be going to the temple. They're faithful Mormons, aren't they? They know that it's the law of obedience, which is obvious. It's not freedom. You must obey. You're not free. Obey. And all women know that it had to do with them obeying their husband. And then, sacrifice. Commit crimes, destroy your life and career and your honor, even if you must die and kill yourself to protect the church from criminal prosecution. And the law of the gospel, yeah, you can't criticize the leaders. You can't touch us. We've got titles. And then Nelson threw in the higher law. There is no higher law. We can check. Again, it's only Bruce R. McConkie who put it in the chapter heading in the Book of Mormon. <laughs> there is no higher law in the text. Nope. Zero. <laughs> we can remove some of the wording. High priest, book of the law. High priest, son-in-law. <laughs> See? Not here. Let's get to section 138. High priest, lawgiver. High priest, pride priesthood, laws of the church. High priest, high priesthood, high priesthood, book of the law. My law, power from on high. Nope, different definitions. High priest, according to the law. According to the law, judged of a higher judge. No, nope, different definition. And then we're back into Hebrews. For the law maketh men high priests. The law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest. It's not here. There is no higher law. It does not exist. But... There is section 132, which I think we have to go to section 131 first. Section 131, this was gutted from the original document. And you'll never guess what was gutted from it when Brigham Young put it in with section 132 the year before he died in 1876. Monogamy. In the celestial glory, there are three heavens or degrees. And in order to obtain the highest, a man must enter into this order of priesthood, meaning the new and everlasting covenant. He's talking about monogamy, not polygamy. Okay, and so with monogamy removed, you then go into section 132. And so, as touching the principle and doctrine of having many wives and concubines. Behold, and lo, I, the Lord, I am the Lord thy God, and will answer thee as touching this matter. Therefore, prepare thy heart to receive and obey the instruction which I am about to give unto you. For all those who have received this law, ta da, higher, section 131. Law, section 132. Just see what Nelson did. 
he changed the law of chastity to polygamy. This is the higher law talked about in the gospel. Law of gospel, law of the gospel. Polygamy. It's not taught by Jesus. <laughs> they lied. They're deceiving you into thinking there's a higher law that Jesus gave. Doing away with the Jews. No. The church purposely is setting it up for polygamy. Higher, section 132, law, or 131, law, 132. That's the higher law. Polygamy of Brigham Young, not Joseph Smith, because it's monogamy in section 131. Joseph Smith also had, in the 1835 edition, section 101 on monogamy. You ex nevermos got punked by this church. You are blaming the wrong person. And so, yeah, Nelson changed the law of chastity to polygamy, the higher law. And then, boom, the law of consecration, which has always remained the same. You own nothing, you give everything to the church and the kingdom. That's slavery. That is not God's way that I went over with you in scripture from the Book of Mormon. No monetary economy. All are free. All are prosperous. All things in common doesn't mean you wear the same clothing. You eat the same foods. You are free. And you have talents and gifts through receiving inspiration and producing the results of accomplishment. And you share it with others, just like I've done. I had an idea to change the beehive warehouse, I did it. And it helped the church. Whereas I tried to help with the order processing pick line, saying don't don't put in the cranes. They didn't listen. They listened to titles and they lost over a million dollars that first year. And the company blamed the people for being incompetent. And so, yes, Paleo Hebrew. Deciphered Paleo Hebrew. Do I keep it to myself? No. I share it with the world freely. I don't want to make profit off of it. I didn't know about academia when I started with Amazon. Because I thought, hey, this will be a great way to get it around the world so that everybody can see. And then I found academia and then no longer bothering with Amazon anymore. So don't buy my books, go to academia. <clears throat> and so that's what Zion would be like. Whether you make clothes, whether you produce food, which we can do the slave labor work automatically with robotic technologies, because there's no need for a monetary economy. And thus all crime, you know, the, the child sex trafficking from uh, Jack Ryan, uh, that fourth final season, yeah, it's only being done because people can make money off of it. Slavery only exists because people can make money off of it. People can profit and benefit from putting other people in slavery. That's why it exists. You remove money from the equation, there's no need to put people into bondage and slavery. And the only thing that I can see still being a problem in society is 
the heart, where uh, sex crimes would be the only thing that would be a problem. But it wouldn't be per se, it would be minimized. Because women would no longer be choosing a mate based on their economic potential or status, title. They would be able to actually choose somebody based on love. But, yeah, there's always multiple people who love an individual. And so you're going to have those fights and contentions for supremacy for their affection. And I've learned as a child to step back and bow out. And maybe that's why women don't like me, because I didn't fight for them. I didn't cut off the head of the infidel fighting for her love. I don't want you if that's what you want of me. So, yeah. Women always go after the bad boy when for their fantasy when they get it. And then they regret it the next morning. I should have chose Travis, but I ruined it. Yeah, you did. Guys do the same thing, but it's different. But that's involving proper sex ed, which requires science and logic, Socratic methodology, back into the classrooms. And so, yeah, we're falling behind other nations and even China because we're not teaching science to our kids. We're allowing companies with titles. You know, Samsung got six billion from the government to pursue whatever, AI, I guess. But AI is a failure. I've been warning you already it will not work. It will be the destruction of mankind because they did not use scientific, logic-based programming. They allowed fallacy argument programming into the system. And it will fail. We've already seen it with ChatGPT. We saw the consequences of the programming where they say, kill yourself and kill others. There's a problem in the programming that needs to be fixed. I told you what the problem is. Psychology. The ones who told your kids to be entitled and get a passing grade to get a title of graduation and be entitled to go into the job market unqualified with no accomplishments and thus tank the businesses, tank the universities. As I saw the one book reference on Wikipedia yesterday in the video from a guy who published at Harvard. <laughs> you humiliate your educational facility when you demonstrate that you have nothing accomplished and you use your title to get away with your career. And thus, America is doomed because nobody wants to listen to me. It's coming.